before we get into the exciting stuff, we've got to learn a few basics how to fly this thing line of sight and what the controls do. So hopefully you've already done a bit of this. You might want to also do this in your house uh, because the Tiny Hawk is small, it's safe, it won't break anything. And if you've got, you know, if you're in your house, you're not going to lose the quad. So it's up to you. But we're out in the field anyway, and I'm going to demonstrate with my big five inch quad because it's going to be a lot easier to see on the video. So uh, first you're going to plug in your Tiny Hawk and then you're going to take your QX7 and we've got the arm switch in the same place. I'm just using the X9D because it's what I've got with me and I'm more familiar with it, but it works the same. We're going to arm it here and when I click that down, the propellers will start spinning and it'll be exactly the same on the Tiny Hawk with the QX7. Um, if your throttle is up like this, it won't arm. It's just a safety feature, but if you're wondering why your quad won't arm, it could be just because your throttle was up. So make sure that's down. And now we're all set. So you're gonna see this on the stick cam and I'm gonna give you a quick line of sight demonstration. So the first thing we're gonna do is just try and take off and hover. So all I do is arm it, push the throttle up, and then I'm gonna pitch forwards. There's a little bit of side wind here actually, which made me drift slightly. So definitely if you're out in the field with the tiny hawk make sure there's absolutely no wind definitely don't come out on a windy day because the tiny hawk will get blown all over the place anyway i'm just pitching forward and then pitching back and on the stick cam you'll barely see my thumbs moving so i'll try and do this a bit more exaggerated so you can so you can see it on the stick cam but i'm going to come back i'm pitching back and then i'm going to pitch forward and that's essentially your brakes on a quad. If you're going forwards and you want to suddenly stop, you just pitch back and that'll slow you down. And if you're coming back by pitching back and you want to stop, you pitch forward and again that'll slow you down. Your roll stick is your right thumb, so if I roll to the right, the quad will drift right. If I roll to the left, the quad goes left. And then your yaw turns it like this. So that's what yaw does. So I'm doing my left thumb if I push my left thumb to the left, it'll start spinning left. If I push it to the right, it'll start spinning right. So there's quite a few different things to think about, and that's why flying is so difficult. But you do get used to it, and this is all you're gonna do is just practice going forwards and then uh, and back again. And the last thing is you're gonna practice something called walking the dog. So you just hover the quad in front of you, and you start walking. And then you're gonna adjust the quad so that wherever you walk, it's in front of you. And that's keeping the nose away from you at all times. The reason is because if you turn it this way, suddenly all the controls reverse. Even me as an experienced pilot could lose the quad line of sight quite easily that way before you know it's drifted off. So always keep the nose facing away and then just walk around and follow it and just adjust your thumbs accordingly so that wherever you walk, it stays in front of you and that's going to really help you get a good feel for the controls what kind of throttle management you need how to stop how to go faster and slower and all the essentials so i'm going to wrap this video up with a quick last tip now i'm back home with the tiny hawk and that is you can practice over a bed so if you put it on the bed and you crash obviously it's going to be a nice soft landing so what you want to do is just practice all those things we did out there in the field and uh, just do it in the house. And this way it's never going to fly away and get lost and uh, you can just practice flying it back and forwards. And I want you to get proficient at this so that when we're ready for that FPV experience you'll have the stick controls totally down and you'll know all the different movements of the drone. And that's going to set you up for success with your first FPV experience. So that's going to wrap it up for this line of sight tutorial video. And thanks a million for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. Join me in the next one where we're going to be going out to the field and doing our very first FPV flight. See you then.